All Demsec videos are for educational purposes only. Techniques shown in these videos should only be used in lab environments or environments where authorization has been provided. NordVPN have hooked you guys up with a coupon code which will give you 72% off of the two year package. Use the code DEMSEC to get your discount. What's going on guys, it's Dale here from DEMSEC and first of all I've been away a very long time and I'm sorry about that but new video today and also apologies if I sound nasally. Um, it's like actually getting to British summer time and I have really bad hair fever and uh, yeah, it's just not not my friend at the moment. So in this video we're going to be looking at setting up MHN, which is a open source project and uh, it actually stands for Modern Honeypot Network. And what really drew me to this is it makes it ridiculously easy to add a whole different bunch of honeypots to it. Uh, the actual web interface itself just gives you a one-liner command that you can insert into a freshly made VPS or server anywhere and it'll convert it into a honeypot. So the end result is this kind of fret map. There is other details behind the scenes but this kind of fret map is also kind of what I was interested in. So we're going to be setting this up on DigitalOcean and Vulture. Uh, the reason I'm using two providers is just because I wanted to uh, Always do a little bit of research into which provider gets hit more, and if there's any more kind of advanced IDSs or anything in place on either DigitalOcean's or Vulture's network. So we're going to need a number of servers here. This one here is the MHN server. This is the actual web interface, and I've probably over provisioned this quite a bit. It's got four gig of RAM and an eighty gigabyte disk. Uh, but the reason I did that is just because, well, I had some credit from DigitalOcean. I just decided to make sure that it was nice and snappy. And other than that, we've got four other servers set up here, which are all our honeypots. Um, I've given them descriptive names. Uh, these Glas and Elas ones won't make sense until we get into the web interface. I'd start setting that up, but those two are two particular types of honeypots. Uh, we've got Kauri here, which is an SSH honeypot. So this will log uh, people trying to log into the server, and if they actually log in and start running commands, it'll log all that kind of stuff. And the final one's just a Snort honeypot, and Snort is basically an IDS but fairly low level and then as I mentioned before the MHN server so first off I'm going to delete all these and then come back and we're going to set them all up from scratch so I've got rid of all those droplets now and we're going to create a new one so in this case I'm going to go for the 4 gig 2 core 80 gigabyte disk for the MHN server again as I said you probably don't have to do this this one would probably be just fine uh, but I'm just making sure it's nice and snappy for the video and I'm just going to name it MHN dash server I should mention that we are using Ubuntu 16.04 just because it's on the um, GitHub it said that this version has been tested and works so we're going with that. Obviously there are other versions available but I'm going for this because I know it works. So that droplet's now been created and I've SSH'd into it here and the first thing we're going to need to do and this was a pitfall that I kind of ran into the first time is you need to create a non-root user that has sudo access in order to set this up. If you try and install it as root, it kind of screws up a lot of the permissions and it's kind of a pain in the backside to sort out. So just create a user, install it through the user. Pretty easy. So to do that, add user Dale. And it's going to say enter a new password. So I'm going to do that. Uh, we're not going to bother entering any of this. And then what we're going to do is do via sudo. And scroll down. And basically copy uh, this line here. This is not the best way to add people as root, but you know, we're doing it the easy way. And we just copy this line, so it's your user, and then essentially just copy the line above. And then we're just gonna do control X, Y, enter to save that. And now we're just gonna sudo, uh, sorry, sue to Dale. And now we're logged in as Dale. And now we can start the installation. So what you need to do is go down into the description and grab this Fretstream URL. And then we're just going to grab its GitHub clone URL. And then we're just going to git clone this URL. And then we've got a folder called MHN. And then we can just do install.search. And we're going to do ins uh, sudo install.search. Let's go ask for my password. There we go. And now we just need to wait. Then we're going to get to this point where it's uh, telling us that Mongo is active. And all we have to do is hit Q to quit out of that. And it's going to continue the installation. 
So we're almost at the end of the installation when you get to this set of questions here and um, it's just going to you know, help us finalise setting up the uh, Honeypot server. So I don't want it in debug mode but it's up to you whether you do. Super user email, I'm going to enter one of my email addresses, so dale.densec.com. Doesn't really matter because I'm not connected it to an email server so none of this is actually going to work. Password twice of course, base URL that's fine, honeymap URL that is also fine, mail address yeah yeah yeah, yes yes, like I said we're not connecting it to a mail server, you can if you want to. Uh, there we go, path for log file and now it's just going to initialize everything so be patient as it says. So now it's just going to ask a couple more questions. Would we like to integrate this with Splunk? So it does have Splunk integration but we don't have any kind of Splunk implementation here so I'm going to say no. I would like to install Elk. Uh, we won't get too far into this, but it's Elk is kind of like an open source kind of seam, if that makes any sense to you, but we'll cover this on a later video. So in this case, I'm going to say no. So with that all set up, if we just get the IP address of the server, which is right here, and open this in a web browser, we are presented with the login page for the modern Honeypot network server. So, same details we used before. So we've logged in. And obviously by default, we have no attacks or anything set up here. So let's just get straight into it. Let's deploy our first honeypot. So we're gonna go to deploy, and it's got a few pre-configured ones, which is really awesome. So we're gonna go with snort, and now we've got this one command here. So what we need to do now is go back to DigitalOcean and set up a new droplet. So we're going to go for the same settings again. So we've got a new Ubuntu machine, 1604. We're going to go for the base package here. I'm going to add my SSH key and we're going to give it a descriptive name. It's not server one. And we're going to create that. So we're now connected to the snort server. So we're going to grab this command from the other server that we just set up. And we'll just go paste it into that and run it. Yes, it's really this simple. It's kind of cool. So now it says that Snort is fully set up. The last thing I'm going to do is just double check IF config. And yep, we are on EVE 0, so we have nothing to worry about. If your interface connected to the internet appears different than EVE 0, uh, drop me an email and I'll show you the solution for that. Um, if enough people comment about it below, I'll post a video about how to change that kind of stuff. But it's just one config file and then you restart the Snort service. So if that's been successful, we should be able to go to View Sensors and we'll see the sensor here. And we've already picked up two attacks, so let's have a look at those. So we've had two random connections from somewhere. How do we know what types of attacks these are? So we can go over to the Payloads tab, and we can see here that there's a couple of DShield block lists. So obviously Snort's pulling down a list of known bad hosts and that kind of stuff, so it's just dropping that connection. Well, advising to drop the connection because it's on one of these block lists. And then another one is some active threat intelligence poor reputation IP. So that could mean that it's been hosting malware at some point or it's been known to run attacks or it's just on a dodgy network that runs dodgy servers which do happen and i think more interestingly we can go to map and it's going to load this map and as a new attacks come in we'll see them down here and it'll light up the map and then finally all you need to do to add all different types of servers is just go down this list and we've got ubuntu snort cowry as i mentioned in the ssh honeypot we've got a last honey which is like a um elastic search Honeypot, so anyone trying to compromise Elasticsearch, you can get that kind of information. Suricata, which is another IDS, going to be interesting to try that one out. And to be honest guys, that's it for this video. Super simple video and it's just one of those things that I've always wanted to set up. I've always seen the threat maps and gone, you know what, yeah, I want to make one of those. So sorry it's been so long guys. Hopefully I'm going to get back on a schedule with making videos, but it's, you know, busy, busy times at work and just in life. So I'm not going to promise anything, but hopefully... I'll be able to post more regular videos now. If you had any questions, leave them in the comments below. Come over to the forums. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It's free and you get to listen to more of me, I suppose, if that's a benefit. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.